afternoon, family. Good afternoon. Uh, today at Jazz 313, I'm going to do something different. We're going to talk about the Planet Square and the genetic makeup of jazz. Uh, you know, in the Bible, we heard all these stories about such and such, but you got such and such. What separate a queen from a common person? Why do people latch on to the Queen of England? Because they know their legacy. Uh, that's what separates. But this is just an illustration of the human body. And today's lesson, we will be talking about what makes families do what they do in music. Right here is a Punnett Square. And a Punnett Square we will talk about. Like it's been known that, hey, I have a big nose. My father had a big nose. Some things are learned behavior. Some things are phenotypes, genotypes, karyotypes. But as we move into this today's lesson, we'll be talking, uh, the music we play is from the Jones Brothers, uh, Alvin Jones, the great jazz family out of Pontiac, Michigan. But let me start right now with this. Uh, we're talking about a great family out of uh, Tel Aviv, Bilal and David Korn. They ended up with three kids who are doing their thing. Uh, world-class musicians, Avish Cohn, uh, Annette Cohn, and they have a sister named Yuval, who claimed the saxophone at uh, nine years old. But then we're going to talk about the great Joshua Redman and his dad, the great Dewey Redman. Genetics. Uh, that Punnett Square, the Mendelssohn, you can elaborate more of that uh, you know, I'm an old biology teacher. This is Jazz 313. If you like what we're doing, click subscribe and share. Uh, I just want to just, you know, I'm just having fun with this thing. This is a passion project. Uh, Joshua, he was no slouch himself. When Reverend was just 22 years old, fresh out of Harvard, Pat Metheny called him the most important musician in 20 years. A great, great one. Uh, you talking about multi-generational families that was once the rule in New Orleans. The music early history is filled with such stories as Brass Badley, as Harry Allen, and his son and trumpeter, great Red Allen Jr., pioneers Louis Contrell and his clarinet playing son, Louis Jr., Armut Brass Band, Cornettist, Edward Hall, and his son, Edmund and Herbert and Robert, celebrated. And, you know, we can talk about the Marcellus family, uh, God bless Mr. Ellis. I have to refer to him. He was my mother's age. I used to go down to Snug Harbor, but you're talking about Bradford, Delafano, Winton, um, Jason. Uh, and they have a, 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 another female. They have the Detroit royalty, in my opinion. Everybody's royal in Detroit. But you talk about Carlos McKinney, Harold McKinney, Ray McKinney, Galen uh, 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 McKinney, uh, uh, it's just so many great families who genetically move this music. Uh, if you like what I'm doing, this is Jazz 313. Click, subscribe, and share. Hit that thumbs up button. Hit that thumbs up button. Uh, McKinney, he was born to a prominent uh, family. We talked about Bernard McKinney. Uh, he's a, a, a cousin of the great drummer who's gigging right now, Ali Jackson. Uh, Khalil Jackson. His mother, Curly McKinney, is a singer. Sister Sherry McKinney is a piano. His younger sister, Thelma McKinney, is an aspiring social vocalist. But what impresses me more about uh, Carlos, you know, he played with Marcus Belgrave, uh, Rollins Rooney, Wendell Harper, Buster Williams, Elvin Jones, Steve Terrain, Bradford Whitmer, Sellers, Roy Hargrove, Kenny Garrett, Charlotte Moffitt. But he was in my band from 1989 to 1983. We had a lot of fun with that, with, with that band. Uh, Carlos is a very humble man. Uh, I can't say too much great things about this guy without acting like a fan. But some of the things he did, uh, he got a Grammy Award. He produced such artists as The Dream, Jay Holiday, Bobby Valentino, Jamie Foxx, uh, Shawty, D, whatever. The Dream, he invented a, a song by Trey Song featuring Drake. In 2013, he won a Grammy for his production of the album Unapologetic. Another one we can just talk about, Philadelphia. You got to do a little bit more history of that place. You talk about the great Alice Coltrane, John Coltrane, Robbie Coltrane. Uh, we're talking about in Detroit, Regina Carter, 
James Carter, uh, uh, violinist player, the great saxophone player, Hubert Laws, Ronnie Laws, Eloise Laws. I mean, down in Houston, Texas, they was doing that thing. You know, do I have to say anything about Duke Ellington? I really am going to waste my time. But Duke and Mercer Ellington, I'm trying to show you how that genotype, my nose, if I get a girl who have a baby and we have a nose, the baby going to have a double allele of a big nose. So everything is 50-50. Uh, you know, in the Bible, such and such begat, begat, begat. This music keep begetting, begetting, begetting. And I just want to show the genetic Pinus Square Mendelssohn way of how jazz have evolved. Uh, Ornette, excuse me, I'm talking about Charnette Moffat and Charles Moffat. His father was known for his famous work with Ornette Coleman. Uh, then him and his son, uh, Charnette just passed like less than a month ago. Uh, Moffat and his son also performed various movie soundtracks. Glenn Glary, Glenn Ross, The Visit. He was featured in uh, the score with Robert De Niro and Marlon Brando. Do I have to talk about the Heat brothers? I mean, Tootie Heat, Percy Heat, the Brecker brothers. Uh, I was just with Randy in New York at the Lincoln Center Jazz uh, like two weeks ago. I mean, they still contributing to the music. They still love the music. One thing about these guys, these guys are multi, multi millionaires, but they do this. They say this is what they was designed to do. And I'm designed to bring you these intricate stories about this American creation. It is jazz. It's nine levels of jazz. But I just want to just show you uh, how this thing go. Uh, John and Carlos Santana. You know, Santana is good. Uh, Santana is, is, a, is a, I can remember back in the day, he came, I used to live on Marlowe in Detroit. He, he broke bread with me, uh, gave us tickets, treated me like, like gold. Uh, uh, he's getting old. Oh, I know he's got some health issues, but his brother John Santana was just as good. You need to look him up. Another one, Marcus Belgrave. I was down at the DSO last week. He got a son that was, that was playing a, a saxophone. I mean, I, I, I didn't get the guy's name, but I was, I was touched when I saw Chris Jackson and uh, Terrence Blanchard was talking about this guy. I can remember him down in Serengeti as, as, as a little one. But anyway, this is the Planet Square, and we're talking about the Mendel Peepa. But I'm showing how those phenotypes go, like Ellis Marcellus and his wife produce all those kids. And it's interesting to see what are the second generation, like the Winans family or the Jackson family. Uh, you know, genes. There are an amazing number of jazz musicians who have blood relatives, mothers, fathers, who are always jazz musicians. Benny and Harry Goodman. Benny Goodman, uh, as, you know, as I, Benny Goodman is just a man. That's all I'm going to say, you know. He... I mean, it was racism was crazy anyway, but he put it together, integrated bands. His brother, Gene Adams and uh, Alvin Adams, Cannonball, Alley, Nat Alley, Nat Alley Jr. If you like that old people, Bryson, uh, Cannonball, Alley's big bands. I mean, those are some of the best, best, uh, you know, Jeff and John and Gerald Clayton family. Wes Montgomery out of Indianapolis. Uh, his brother, Buddy, was on piano. He had a brother named B uh, Monk who played bass. So, you know, it's just gene pool. I think some of it is nurture. Some of it is uh, genetic. You know, when I was coming up, that's all I wanted to do is work at a factory. That's all I saw. Uh, but I had a sales trait in me. I, I got that from my father. I was able to maneuver, as they say in the Bible, your gifts will put you in places that you never even thought. I never thought I'd be at the United Nations talking about jazz, promoting jazz in my retirement. But this is uh, what I'm doing. And I, I love doing this. I love bringing you factual information. Like I tell you, if I'm not enlightening you, you should turn me off. Uh, you know, we talk about Hank Jones, Thad Jones. Uh, everybody talk about Nat King Cole, but he had a brother in Chicago, Freddie Cole, that was doing it. Uh, uh, you know, Kenneth and Bill, they call it the Baron Brothers out of uh, Philadelphia. Teachers at Rutgers. I did a, a, a thing. We did all kiddies. Kenny Barron is still living. Uh, we have another one. We talk about the Bryant brothers, Ray, Lynn, Tommy Bryant, Kenny Drew, his son, Kenny Drew Jr., Kevin Dwayne Eubanks, the brothers, uh, uh, we talk about Lester Boy and his brother, Joseph. Uh, we talking about the Ayla brothers, David and uh, Albert. I mean, it's just, it's just, it's just, I just can just sit here and just tell you how privileged 